Hey guys, welcome back to Field Smash Golf. Um, today we're going to talk about the similarities and differences with the iron and the driver um, with the setup and the swing. Uh, my name is Anthony Fiorenza, here to help you own your swing. Let's go ahead and get started. All right guys, so today we're going to talk about the iron versus the driver. What are the similarities? What are the, what are the differences with those, with those two types of clubs? So first off, first what we're going to talk about is the iron. So, so I'm not going to go into too much detail right now about the setup with the iron. Um, if you're interested in kind of learning more, more about that, um, if you want to check out my very first video, the basics of the swing, I go into greater detail there and explain kind of more in the setup. But right now we'll just kind of go over the quick, quick things you ought to know. So first thing is the grip. So, so what you want to focus on is getting that club more out in your fingertips like that, or at the base of your fingers, not getting it too much in the palm. So you want to get that club more out run through the base of your fingers. And then when you look down, you want to be able to see the first two knuckles on your lead hand right there. For your right hand to be your left hand, for left hand to be your right hand. So then from there, you can do either an interlock grip like that, 10 finger grip, overlap, whatever you whatever you prefer. But, um, so one of those two grips, whichever one works for you, getting that, getting that forward hand, the thumb, straight down the shaft just like that, cover up, cover up with your trail hand just like that. So then with our feet, we want to have our feet about shoulder width apart, just like, just like that. And then, so with our weight shift with the iron, you either want them 50-50, or if you're someone who struggles when you're coming down, kind of leaving your weight back, back like that, have a little bit of weight shift to your front side. It's not a lot, maybe 60 to 40, 55, 45. So, so you either want to be 50-50 with both, with both uh, legs uh, for your weight distribution, or slightly on your front side. You don't ever want you don't ever want your weight to be to be on your trail leg just like that. So then from there you want to have slight knee bend and then slight bend over at the hips just like that. So once you get in your in your good position like that, now we're ready to start the swing. So in order to start uh, start your swing, what you want to do is you want to take everything from the top of your uh, top of your uh, sternum right here all the way down. Uh, to your waist. What you want to do is you want to rotate everything back just like that along with your arms. What, what you don't want to do and what we see a lot of golfers do is they start with the wrists like that before before they make their turn. That's not what you want to do because you're because what's going to happen a lot of times is you're going to whip that club inside, you're going to take it back and then you're going to come over the over the top like that. That's the biggest mistake we see with with them with uh, amateur golfers. So what you want to make sure you do is rotate with your body back until that club gets parallel to the ground like that. So as you can see, it's pretty straight. There's a little bit of an angle there between my arms and the club, but I'm not, but I'm not in this position right here too early. So once you get in that position, you want to continue rotating to the top of your swing. Then you can start, then you can start your wrist hinge just like that. So again, Again, you want to start everything rotating with your body until you get that club parallel. Then you can start to uh, hinge towards the top. So again, again, my weight distribution is 50-50 or slightly to my front side. I'm not swaying back like that, getting that weight going on the outs on the outside uh, of my trail leg. So, so once you get once you get to the top of your swing, in order to start your downswing. All you do is the same is the same thing you just did. You'll start to rotate with your body back back towards uh, your front side. What you want to do before that is you want to have a little bit of weight shift to the front. So in, in your setup, if you started with that, then you can rotate back, try and keep that weight on your left side, then you're good to go. If you're someone that keeps their weight kind of more 50-50, what you want to do is rotate back have a little bit of weight shift towards your front side and then continue rotating on through. What we see, what we see a lot, a lot of amateur golfers do from this position is that again, they start with their hands and they throw it, they throw their hands out and they cast the club. So if you're someone who's prone to coming down, getting, hitting the ground way before the ball or coming through, not hitting the ground at all, 
hitting it on the bottom of the club and getting getting that thin shot, odds are what you're probably doing is you're starting your rotation down with your hands like that and throwing it, throwing your hands out like you would like you would if you're casting casting a fishing rod out to try and catch a fish. So in the golf swing, that's not what we want to do. We want to take it back, weight shift, rotate with our body, keeping that club behind us just like that. So after that, now as we're coming down to hit the ball, in order to actually get the ball in the air, what you want to do is come down, you want to hit the ball in a descending, descending motion, which means you're coming down into the ground. You want to hit the ball first and then take your divot out in front of the ball. What we see a lot of times is people coming through and they pick up trying to help the ball and help the ball into the air. Again, that's that's where the problems happen. Where you're gonna come down, you're gonna you're gonna pick up on it, and you're gonna hit nothing nothing but the ball. You're not gonna have any sort of control with it. So, so you want to come, so you want to come, hit down on the ball with your hands slightly out in front, just like that. Hit the ball, take your divot out and out in front of the out in front of where the ball would be, and then since we've got that weight shift going on our left side. You want to continue rotating on through. So again, same thing how we would keep to have that club kind of parallel to the ground with kind of a straight, straightish um, arm, arm width to the club. Same thing on the follow through. We want to finish in that position, keep our arms relatively straight with the club. And then once the club's parallel, then we continue rotating on through. Again, you want to have that weight, you want to have that weight, finish more on your left side. You don't want to be falling back like that. A good, a good tip you can check with that to make sure you're doing it correctly is if you finish with the weight on the front, you'll be able to pick that foot up and tap that toe. If you finish with your weight back like that, see, I can't get my foot off, I can't get my foot off the ground to tap it. So that's a good check you can do to make sure you're rotating through, getting, uh, getting your weight on your front side, finishing through, our body pointed towards the target able to tap that tail all right so those are the basics of the iron swing next we're going to talk about the driver um, and how that's a little bit different so i'll see you guys back here shortly all right guys so now we're going to we're going to move on we're going to talk about the driver so so with that uh the setup is a little bit slightly different as well as well as the swing um compared to the iron so so the first thing obviously with the driver is the ball set up on a tee. Most times with your irons, you're gonna be playing the irons out of the fairway unless, unless you're on a par three, then you might tee it up a little bit with the irons. So, so once the ball, so when you have the ball teed up, a lot of times we get a lot of, one of the biggest questions we get is, what, well, how high should I tee up the ball? Well, that's kind of a personal preference for you, but, but to start off, if you're new to golf, you aren't sure, you know, if you're teeing it up right or not, here's how, here's how you can check. So. So kind of a general guideline we've used over the years is once you have the ball up on the tee, the height you wanna have it is, is you wanna have it to where the top edge of the club, so we got the face right here, as well as the top the top crown of the club. So when they come together, they create a little bit of an edge right there, or the top, the top part, or the top edge of the club. So what you wanna do is you wanna set it up to where that top edge kinda of cuts the ball, kinda of cuts the ball right in half, just like that. That's kind of a general guideline you can use um, but again you kind of want to go ahead and play around with some different tee heights a little bit lower maybe a little bit higher because it's going to depend on your swing because everybody's swing is not exactly the same you're not going to hit the ball with the same angle of attack so so mix it up play play with some different tee heights see which one see which one works for you if you're able to get on a launch monitor to see your numbers that's even better but we know those things are expensive you're not you're not going to be always a you're not going to always be able to do that but if you're able to, that's gonna work best for you. So, so we have the ball up on the tee. We have the ball, the correct tee height to where our top edge of the club kind of would cut that ball in half. So, and then I'm gonna go and then I'm gonna talk in a little bit greater detail about why, why that is. Why do we tee the ball higher up and we don't put it right, right um, in the smack dab in the middle, in the middle of the face, just like that. I'm gonna go over that later. So, so then from there, so unlike the irons where we had the ball more towards the middle of our stance, with the driver, we want that ball much forward in our stance. So again, kind of a general guideline you can use is you want that ball kind of lined up right on the inside 
of your of your front heel just like that. So if I put my club down for you guys to see, so I tend to play the ball back a little bit further than that. I kind of play it back just a little bit more towards the middle. That's my preference. Uh, when I get when I get the ball going a little bit more forward, kind of more towards that heel, I feel like when I come through, I come and I kind of reach out with the club and I don't really rotate through with my body. Whereas if I have it a little bit further back, I feel like that forces me to have to rotate through with my body and not and not use my arms as much in the swing. Because when you when you're forced to use your arms, that's when the mistakes happen. So so we get set up like this. So. So kind of the final thing in our setup, um, our feet actually will be a little bit wider, wider apart because we're making a longer swing. So we want to have our feet a little wider apart to make sure we stay, we stay balanced. So, so unlike with the iron, so, so if we get set up like this would be my iron swing. So as you can see, my shoulders are kind of more parallel to the ground, just like that. So with the driver, however, what you want to do is you actually want your shoulders to be at a little bit of an angle like this. So if I put my club, same angle as my shoulders, as you can see, they're pointed up more towards the sky instead of being level, level like that. So, so what's the reason behind that? So again, I'm going to go into kind of more detail of this in a second. So we want our shoulders to be more at an angle like this because when we actually come down and hit the ball. So unlike the irons where we came and we wanted to hit down on it to get it in the air, since the driver is sitting up on the tee like that, in order to get the optimal launch angle and the optimal spin rate, what you actually want to do is when you come through, your low point in the swing will be back here like this. And then when you actually hit the ball, it'll be coming up at an upward attack angle. So that's how, that's how, that's partially how all these guys on tour are able to hit the ball so far is they're coming through, they're coming through, their low point of their swing is back towards the middle of their stance. And then they're coming through and hitting that ball in an upward, upward attack angle. So again, I'll kind of go more into more in detail into that here in just a second. So, so once you get set up to it, good, good, just like that. Got our shoulders tilted back a little bit like that. If you're having trouble to find out what that feels like, a good drill you can do is kind of get set up, set up how you would. If you, especially you got your shoulders kind of more parallel like this, take your take your trail hand back on your knee and just slide it down your leg a little bit like that. That forces your shoulders to be kind of more tilted up, just like that. So in order to start our swing, it's the same same thing as the iron. We want to rotate back, rotate back with our body, just like that. Um, something else I forgot to mention is our weight distribution. So unlike the irons, where we talked about, you might want to have it a little bit more on your trick on your lead leg. With the driver, you want to make sure you keep it 50/50. We do not want more of our weight on our left side because that promotes more of a descending descending blow that's gonna add spin to it. So, so you wanna have your feet 50-50, rotate back, keep it parallel, keep those arms and club relatively straight, rotate to the top just like that. So, so, it, so a good check with the drivers, when you rotate back, what you wanna feel, the most pressure you wanna feel on your trail leg when you go back is right on the inside of the knee, just like that. So we don't wanna take it back and get our weight going on our left side like that. We also don't wanna sway back get that get that weight feeling on the outside on the outside of our foot you want to rotate back and you want to feel the most pressure just on the inside of that trail knee just like that so we take it back again so same same thing as the iron swing when we start when we start down we want to make sure we're rotating our body we aren't throwing our hands at it like that the only difference is we are not we are not shifting our weight to the front side like we did with the iron so the driver, we don't want to do the, the weight shift and then rotate. We want to focus more on just rotating like that. So, so once we come down, we're coming down, we get that low point and then we're hitting that we're having a positive angle of attack to help get that ball. So it's kind of like I talked about the longest drivers on tour. All of them have what we call this low point back towards, back towards the middle of our stance. So what you have to imagine is, is when you're coming down, there's a little bit, and there's a little bit of an arc, just like that. It's the same, it's the same for any any type of shot: iron swing, driver swing, bunker shot, chip shot, whatever, whatever you, whatever you you can think of. It has a sort of arc at the bottom of your swing. So the low point is at is the point at where the club is at the lowest part of that arc. So it's coming down, 
it's got that low point and then it travels up travels up just like that so so for all of our full swings that low swing sh that low point is going to relatively be in the middle of our stance so again with the driver come down low point we swing we swing up on it to get that positive attack angle we get that optimal launch angle and we do reduce our spin as much as possible so if you can get your driver swing with your rpms being around 2000 to 2500 rpms that's what that's kind of the range we'd be looking for with the driver that that tells you you're getting you're getting the most spin that you can with your swing so so we rotate through and then kind of same thing with the irons we want to finish with we do want to finish with our weight a little bit on our front side we still don't want to swing and have our weight and have our weight back like that because again when you have your weight back you don't rotate through that forces you to have to compensate with your hands and your arms and if you do that that's where the mistakes happen that's where the dark hook comes in the big high slicing shot out to the right so you still want to rotate through with your body like that turn finish with your weight slightly on your front side be able to tap that toe just like that all right so that's it for today um so again just to kind of recap we went over the iron swing versus the driver swing where are the similarities where are the differences so that's it for today i uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video if you got any other questions please let me know i'm anthony fiorenza for field smash golf and i'll see you guys next time